Uh, evening. Hope hope everything works fine. I've uh, uh, not done this before, so I don't really uh, know what uh, what you're seeing on your screens right now. But uh, this is me, Peter Swidler, doing uh, uh, the final test of the Checkmate Patterns uh, manual by uh, Craft Giraffe, uh, as you can maybe see on your screen, although apparently not. Uh, and uh, I think John Bartholomew also participated in the uh, in, in creating this course. Uh, this is the final test, so the the conditions are somewhat relaxed as uh, puzzle courses go. If you get things wrong, you just get things wrong. You don't get disqualified. So uh, <laughs> I am uh, hoping I will crawl to the finish line. I I was given a timeline of an hour uh, and. Uh, told that if it takes longer than an hour, it's fine. If it takes less than an hour, it's also fine. I don't know what, uh, I think I, I've seen some streams of people doing this before. So I'm, I, I assume somebody somewhere is keeping track of the record. Uh, and perhaps after I'm done, I can ask uh, uh, just, you know, <laughs> how far down the list I am with my result. But uh, that's probably all the, all the intro that is required here. Let's press the start button and uh, start looking at positions. I'm slightly cheating because I have already seen this position uh, when setting up the stream. This is a, uh, a relatively simple one. It's just a mate in three with checks. Uh, Black obviously has, drawing arrows here is simple, that's good. Uh, Black has issues with his back rank. So what we do is we uh, distract the bishop from, on d8 from protecting the king. Uh, and then uh, we give mate on the back rank like that. Uh, this one is not uh, is not particularly difficult, I suspect, but uh, they will become, I assume, more difficult as we progress. Uh, this is a, a position from the uh, game of Alexander Tolosh. Once again, uh, I uh, I suspect you don't see the headers. Uh, this is a this is from a game between Alexander Tolos playing playing the white pieces against uh, Yuri Randvier. The game was played in 1947. Once again, uh, it's made in three with checks. It's not very difficult. For those of you who don't know who Tolos is, Tolos used to uh, be considered uh, one of the uh, perhaps most gifted uh, uh, tactical players of his age. Uh, in particular, if you consider people who were, you know, not household names, who did not go on to become world champions and so on. Uh, the king on f6 is unsafe. The, the bishop, uh, sorry, the bishop, the rook on e5 is hanging, but it doesn't really matter uh, if we can just chase the king down and give mate to it on the f5 square. Yeah? Yeah, I, I, I had a look at the screen uh, at the stream, which is why I am telling I'm telling the people who who, who plug. But I think maybe some information about the position is useful. Uh, I could st I, I could stop doing that, but uh, uh, when I have something to say about the people who played the game, I will perhaps say something. Uh, this is a position uh, between two, I suspect, Dutch players uh, by judging by how, what the names look like. Uh, I suspect Black is winning. With almost you know any any kind of a normal move, but uh, since this is a mating pattern, uh, it's uh, reasonably easy to figure out what you have what you're supposed to do here. You can start by bishop f2 check, but then after king e2 you don't really have follow ups. Uh, so what you should do instead is start by queen is start by queen h4 check, which looks like we have just given up a full queen. But what it actually does is it gives me in this position uh, an opportunity to play knight d4 check, which wasn't there before, because knight on f3 was controlling that square. And now we have knight d4 and knight c5 made. And uh, Chessable tells me I've leveled up. And I have reached the rank of keen learner. I am very proud of myself. Uh, this is a very famous position. This is a position uh, from a game between Kasparov and Smirin. I probably would have been able to remember that Gary played the white pieces here. And I do remember the solution, which is kind of useful. Although I suspect I would have been able to solve it anyway. Uh, the bishop on h3 needs to land on e6 uh, with obviously decisive effect, but uh, currently the rook does not have very good squares. We cannot give a check from e8 because the queen controls that square. And the king has you know, some cover 
uh, because the pawn h6 is still alive. So I think what you do here is you start by taking on h6, uh, which removes the cover and also creates a threat of bishop e6 mate because the rook on h6 was covering all the squares on the h file. Uh, and now we just uh, uh, come in and uh, deliver mate uh, with checks. I think queen f7 is uh, efficient enough here, queen f7. And now we go bishop f5, uh, drag the king to some kind of an unfortunate square and chase him down with checks and give mate on the f7 square. Um, this game I have not seen. It's a game between uh, Artem Mishnah and uh, Iveta Rylich played in 2004. I assume we can chase down, I mean, this being a mating pattern course, the assumption that we can somehow chase down the king on b3 and give mate to it is I think a safe, it's a safe assumption. Um, I think I found it, uh, you, white generally wants to go to a4 when you give a check and then a5 and b6. Uh, so you want to be able to give mate the king on a2, uh, on a4 if it goes there. And the only really good mating square for that is a square on a2. So you start with queen b1 check. If king a4, we have queen a2 mate. And here we have to stop the king from reaching the d5 and c6 squares. So we go queen a2 check, and then we chase it down in the center. These types of puzzles are slightly counterintuitive because uh, it feels like uh, if we if we look at the starting position there, it feels like it might be you know more intuitive to try and keep the king uh, on the edge of the board here, uh, when in fact you have to drag it all the way to the center and give it may uh, give mate in the center, but. Um, if you take, if you think about it logically or just calculate it cleanly, it becomes obvious that even on d3, the king is not safe. Uh, this is a game between uh, Daniele Vacaturo and Daniele Ginocchio in 2009, which uh, once again, uh, this being a mating puzzle course is kind of helpful because um, if I didn't know white necessarily had mate, I would be looking at many moves here, but knowing we have mate, you start looking for specifically ways to, to chase down the black king. Uh, and this option uh, comes to mind quite naturally. We take on f8 and then we uh, start giving checks to it. And here after knight f8 check, I think it's actually kind of interesting because, uh, hang on a second. Yeah. Um, I'm not going mad. I was I was I was uh, slightly confused there. Uh, it's it, I think the system will only um, uh, make one move for black here. Uh, but depending on where the king goes, actually two different moves give mate after knight f8 check. After king h8, we have a double check from g6. I just want to point out that if the king went to g8, the solution would have been to play knight e6 check. Once again, using the fact that uh, the knight on g7 is pinned. And then going rook takes g7 mate next move. But here we go knight g6 double check and rook h8 mate. Um, this one looked very easy for a second and then started looking slightly more difficult and then became easy again. Uh, when you have the option of going knight g3 check in positions like this, you obviously uh, immediately think this is winning. And it is actually winning, but. After knight g3, uh, hg, my first instinct was we just play queen h5, but then white has <clears throat> knight h3. Uh, so you have to do it slightly longer. You have to play rook h6 and, again, and then give up the rook as well. And then the, the queen uh, in conjunction with the knight delivers the final blow. Um, this is the very end of a game. I have a feeling I'm supposed to know. Uh, between uh, Areshenko and Bocharov, which uh, it doesn't say where it was played, and I'm instantly, you know, trying to figure out if maybe I was there present at that tournament, uh, but I don't think so. One sec. Uh, my first instinct was to play Queen C5, and then. Isn't that just, hang on, that is actually mate in two, right? I'm overthinking it. I've, uh, I've tried to make it more difficult than it actually is. It's just check and mate here. Hmm. 
This one is slightly trickier because, uh, hang on a second, something is annoying me here. I'll just, I'll just mute this altogether because it's uh, making weird sounds in my ear. Um, my my original thought here was that we have to do something connected with the idea of bishop g7 and queen e8, but uh, rook takes g7 and then rook g8 appears to be covering it quite quite comfortably. So uh, I'm guessing this is one of those weird puzzles where the first move is a capture. And as somebody who has solved you know a number of studies in my life. It is just very, very difficult for me to start calculating a first move in a study uh, uh, when the first correct move is a capture. But I think the solution actually is to take on e7. We take on e7, we create a threat of queen e8 mate. Uh, and then after queen takes e7, we make a quiet move queen f7, uh, creating a threat of bishop g7 mate. And then we take on f7 with the pawn and the pawn promotes to uh, well, I I tried to to promote it to a rook, which would also be uh, good enough, but the computer didn't let me. But obviously, a fate queen is not a mistake here. Uh, this is a very uh, typical mating uh, mating pattern, actually, which you are supposed to recognize instantly. And the uh, the big question here is just not to mess up the move order. Uh, you instantly uh, see that probably the, the final mating pattern will be the bishop on f4 controlling all these squares and the, the light square bishop giving mate from the a6 square. But if you start by trading the queens uh, in the starting position, you give black the choice of running with the king to b7. So what you need to do is keep the king boxed in for the entire uh, run of the example and only play bishop a6 when it's actually mate. Uh, this one is very cute because we will actually be giving mate with the bishop on d7. Well, that's, just, that's not true, but uh, the bishop on d7 will play a prominent part here. It's currently not doing very much, but that actually should give you a hint because uh, uh, you should be trying to use all of your pieces. So uh, we start by playing rook f4 check. This distracts the bishop from the uh, e5 square, and now we go e6, e5, discover, check. And after driving the king to f3, we go queen takes a four mate. Um, what are we doing here? I think it's just a mate. Like this one is not very difficult. You, uh, you, you cannot give white any tempi at all because obviously white is threatening to give his own, uh, his own mate in the center. So your every move is supposed to be a check here, which is why you always start with c takes d4 and then you make sure that the king doesn't run towards the c3 square, and then you finish it off on the e3 square with g4 mate. Um, this one is, once again, the most noticeable uh, quality of this position is that black has really nobody defending the back rank apart from the queen on e8. So we distract the queen on e8, and we deliver uh, mate on the back rank. Mm. Here, my initial reaction was we're supposed to play queen h3 check and then bishop takes f2, but the king can run in this direction, which is something we should be stopping. So uh, I think the point here is we start by playing queen d3. The king runs in the opposite direction, and then we start chasing it down from this side. And uh, in this position, it's important to drive the king, uh, the, the, the knight to f1, because uh, we need in this uh, in this position we need to cover the c2 square, which is why I forced white to play knight f1, and now queen e2 is made. Here. Uh, it will be a, a kind of a slightly modern take on the on the smothered mate. We drive the king all the way to the corner, and then we give it mate in the classical fashion. We start with queen c6 check, queen e4 check. And here, it might look like queen e1 check is the correct solution, because rook takes e1, rook takes e1 is mate, but white has queen d1 in the fly. So it's important not to blunder the fact that queen e1 is actually not mate. But the old-fashioned smothered mate still works. 
uh, in this position, we are supposed to give, I suspect, many, many checks. I think the solution has to start with checking on F8 and checking on F, sorry, checking on F7 and then checking on F8. And that drags the king out. And then we, uh, we give a mate to it. Basically, we want to be going bishop takes f5 with a check uh, to drive the king further forward and then uh, chase it down on the g5 square. Uh, here, I am very tempted by the idea of playing bishop takes g6, fg, and f7, but I think, sort of sadly for us, uh, f7 is not the solution. Queen takes g6 will be the solution. But f7 is not the solution. Uh, it, it, the actual solution is slightly more brute force. Uh, we play bishop takes d5, then we play f7, and then we play rook h8 mate. Uh, the, the romantic in me was very much looking forward to playing f7, king takes f7, and bishop takes d5, double check. But the king runs away to e8, and then it becomes messy. Probably doesn't even win. Um, in this position, I think the solution quite simply is we go bishop f6 and there is no defense against bishop g5 mate. Mm, and black has no checks to prevent white from actually landing the bishop on g5 with mate. And we, I can take with either. I wonder if the machine will count it as a mistake if I take with the wrong pawn here, but it's sort of more aesthetically pleasing to capture towards the center. Yeah, I'm, well, I take took a brief look at the at the chat. Yeah, I am probably doing this wrong by talking, but just doing this for speed is is also an option. But uh, I thought I might sort of explain how to how to approach this. I could obviously do this faster uh, if I just wanted to do it for speed. Um, I think we're supposed to play H. No, hang on, H5, Rook H1. That's not the way. Uh, we cannot afford to allow Rook H1, so we start with a check. But we also cannot afford to let the king back uh, get back to the F pile. So I think we probably go Rook B F2, and then we deliver uh, some sort of mate with pawns. And uh, in this position, I am guessing it's actually King H6 because after F. E, we will not have enough mating threats. So we go king h6 and then we go f5 and, uh, and gf. Um, this is a very uh, important setup to actually know and, and recognize. It happens in a variety of fashions in this particular case. Basically, uh, we don't need very many pieces to deliver the final, uh, the final threat to the king. The bishop on f6 and the rook will be enough. Uh, so what we actually need to do is just to remove the bishop from g7. And the most efficient way to do it is to play queen h6. Uh, and then after rook takes h6, uh, nothing can really stop us from getting rook h8 mate in. <clears throat> uh, this is a curious one. Actually, it's not. It's just a mate in two is checks once again. Uh, you want to land the bishop on c5, but the queen on h5 is hanging. I was at first. I looked at the immediate bishop c5, but as I said, bishop takes h5 is a large threat. Uh, but we do have the option of taking on e8 and then going bishop c5, and uh, the pin on the back rank doesn't allow black to play queen e7, and the bishop on b3 controls all the other squares. Mm. Here, uh, yeah, it's a very cute one because. Like you, you instinctively think black should be winning, but I didn't realize it was made just sort of by brute force because the knight, we start by giving this double check. It's very natural here to give this double check with knight f1. But then somewhat surprisingly, the knight on f1 also does a very, very good job of controlling important squares. So after queen h2 check, I suspect that the computer will take on f1, but uh, in terms of aesthetics, I think it's more pleasing to imagine white playing king f2 here with knight on f1 still alive. And queen takes g2 is still made because the knight on the fun controls the e3 square. Um, here, I think the tricky part is uh, we are giving, it's a very, it's a reasonably simple construction, but uh, what is slightly counterintuitive here is to start the, the mating uh, construction by offering a queen trade 
but we do need to remove the queen from f6 to have access to some important squares. So we go queen takes f5. And this is a construction you really should be able to recognize. The knight just, uh, whoops, I can't draw arrows once again. Uh, the knight just gets to f7 uh, with checks. And if black cannot interpose anything on this diagonal, there is nothing he can do to stop this. Um, once again, this being a mating pattern uh, course, you, you have to assume you have to start with check. So I'll play rook f7. If king g8, uh, we just go rook f8 and rook one f7 again. Now we go rook g7, king h5. And this is uh, kind of weird because I haven't actually figured out where the mate is yet. But I think the point is uh, we go rook f5 check. And now after rook g5, we can make a quiet move king h3 after which black really has no defense against g2, g4 mate. Uh, this is a cute one. This, this one I like. Uh, black can take a number of white pieces uh, in their position after king h3. But regardless of what they take, we always have uh, g4 uh, lending the, the final blow. Here, uh, uh, it's a game uh, in which the black pieces were played by a good friend of mine, a Ukrainian grandmaster. Uh, Vladimir Baklan. I think the first game I played against Vladimir was in 1990, maybe even earlier than that. I suspect much of uh, our chat was not yet born at that point. I'm pretty sure we're supposed to go rook takes e3 and then queen d3 check uh, because you do want to uh, drag the king out and you do want to start uh, forcing our way through into the white position. Uh, and here... Once again, not playing queen takes e3 is unsinkable. And in this position, I am choosing between h5 and f5. I have a feeling it's probably f5. Um, I'm slightly, no, I'm not worried about king h4. So we go f5. And if king takes f5, we can actually chase the king down and give mate to it on the e5 square. Uh, we just do queen f4, queen f7 check, and then rook d5 mate. I have a feeling I'm supposed to know this position, but I don't actually. Uh, it's also curious that it's uh, it's in a mating pattern uh, book because I have a feeling the correct solution is to go rook e1 here. But my issue is what happens if black, let's say, goes knight b8, c6. Uh, I have a feeling mate will not be so easy to give if black doesn't comply and doesn't take on d5. But I'm still pretty sure it's the correct solution. So I'll go with this. Uh, and now after black has taken the queen, I assume the final solution here is just to play bishop h6. It's very important not to uh, let the king out of the uh, out of the cage and uh, with all of the white pieces attacking the bishop on f8, uh, black will not be able to st uh, stop uh, rook f8, rook f8 with mate. <clears throat> This is a very, very famous setup. Uh, I have once lost a bug house game to this mate, uh, which is quite impressive. If you consider, I had a full hand of pieces. Uh, this happened to me, I think it was 1988. I was playing bug house. Uh, we had a training camp before a junior tournament and uh, my opponent was Konstantin Sakaev, who I assume some of you will know. And uh, he did this to me in a buckhouse game and we both were sitting there just marveling at the board because even, even uh, in, in buckhouse, there is no defense against this particular mating mechanism. You start by playing queen g7 check uh, because you know it's a, such a short check, nothing can interpose. And then you go 94 f5 double check. Once again, buckhouse or no, there is nothing you can do about it. Now actually in this position, both of these things are made. Uh, but yeah, I remember feeling, you know, uh, this feeling of wonder when I realized that no matter how many pieces I have in my hand, this is still mate in three uh, that I can do absolutely nothing against. This one is curious because I have a feeling I'm supposed to go knight h7. No, I'm not. No, 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 no. Uh, the solution here, I think, probably involves us stopping the move bishop b6. It might be important to stop the move bishop b6 here. 
Uh, and also we want to stop the king running very far. So the first move is rook d7 check, uh, just uh, establishing the rook on the square as a kind of a doorstop. The king tries running in that direction, but then we chase it down. As you can see, the rook stops the king from reaching the d8 square, and then we uh, and then we um, give mate to it on the f8 square. That's uh, <clears throat> that's an interesting puzzle because uh, I think it's fair to say that uh, like in a blitz game, you just play e7 and black resigns. But I'm wondering if there is a stronger move here somehow, which is forcing uh, like an either, even that wins even harder somehow than uh, e7 does. But I don't think it really is. Like if if uh, it's one of those situations where, like, if e7 is wrong, you don't want to be right. Um, and yet, uh, if if rook e8 once again, we can just uh, go back to our fail safe and deliver a smother, uh, smothered mate. Um, that's a curious position. You really have to wonder what all of those pieces are doing on the queen side for black. Uh, they don't appear to be doing very much. And you, you have to wonder why they're there. My first instinct is probably wrong. I think, once again, it's, it's a difficult puzzle for me because I think it starts with a capture. I think you're just supposed to take on g6 and there's no defense against rook g8 check, uh, which will be... Uh, the kind of a check there is no coming back from. I was trying to make rook h5 and then something like rook g5 worked, but I think that's a little bit too messy. Yeah, and after queen d7... Yeah, this is very cute, actually. I was wondering about, instead of queen d7, there was a move king h7, which I haven't solved yet. But queen d7, we have a very nice setup here, because obviously uh, the black pieces are controlling the seventh rack quite well here. And you do want to include the queen in the attack uh, to, to land the final blow. So in order to do that, you actually have to get rid of one of your rooks. And now that we have gotten rid of one of our rooks, still, the queen actually does land on g6 with mate. <clears throat> um, yeah, this is, a, once again, something that it's probably useful to recognize uh, it looks very, very logical to take on h7 with the bishop and, and give a check here. But then you stop for a second and you ask yourself, wouldn't it, wouldn't it be better if we could take on h7 with a queen here instead of a bishop? And that should land you on the idea of playing bishop d5 check. And then you do take on h7 next move. Hmm. I think this one, once again, it's all... Uh, uh, it's all very logical, but the one finesse here, you obviously start with queen h7 check, but now if the king of seven, the king is threatening to go to f6. And if you start with bishop g6 check here, after king of six, I suspect white is not doing poorly, but there is no mate. So what you start uh, with is actually knight e5 check. And after, only after bishop that takes on e5, now we go bishop g6. We have ensured that knight e5 has been met by bishop takes e5, and now we have d takes e5 as a final as a final move in the puzzle. I wonder what number that is. I wonder if there is a way to see uh, which puzzle this is. This one is uh, a variation on a very, very uh, common theme. Uh, I think the most beautiful uh, game of this type is the game between Taimanov and Karpov and Taimanov, I think, in which Taimanov did this mirrored, I think, on the king side. Basically, the solution here is to go once again, knight b3 check, making sure that the a file becomes open. And then we take this knight on, on c8, and there's really no stopping uh, the mate on the a file. But I think the uh, the uh, Carp of Taimanov game is, it's definitely more famous and it's slightly cleaner than this. But maybe there, uh, there was a way to stop mate with some heavy material losses, whereas in, in the game we are solving right now, there is no way to stop. This one is 
interesting. I guess we just give mate on the b7 square. My first, I tried looking at something like bishop takes b7 here, but it gives like a little bit too many options. And sort of slightly sadly for us, the solution is just to give very many checks in the row. We start with queen e6, and the king starts running towards the a7 square, but unfortunately, even the a7 square is not safe enough because in this position, as usual, we can use the fact that the pawn on b7 is pinned by playing queen a6 and queen takes. Um, okay, so I've solved 35 out of 100, and I've already spent half an hour. I should probably stop talking. Yeah, uh, now that I've seen the number, I will, I will become, I will become slightly, slightly more silent. I think. Mm. It's a combination of d7 and rook b2, but I wonder which order is the right one. I think this is probably the right order. Nope. Okay, so this is the, the first one we got wrong. I didn't really like starting with rook b2 because I didn't really want to allow rook takes g2, but I guess it doesn't really matter that much. Um, that was always going to be the final position in this puzzle, but I wonder why I couldn't start with d7 check. It seemed uh, it seemed like it was working as well. I think the solution here is go rook e6 and then bishop g7 and rook e8 mate. This is a very, very famous game. I probably wouldn't even be able to say that it's a Tzvitan game, but uh, it's one of the most beautiful uh, combos in, in all of the King's Indian attacks ever. You should know this pattern. This is a very, very famous example of how to finish the, the King's Indian mating attacks on the King's side. <clears throat> I very much would like to play queen a3 here, and I actually think it's the correct solution, uh, creating a little bit too many threats. <clears throat> yeah, this position looks like it, you know, every move wins, but we don't need to win we need to give mate and that's slightly more difficult but it's one of those where you feel like if you give enough checks one of them will eventually be made it's not very scientific but it's uh it's how you generally feel about positions like this i want to play queen e3 check but i don't currently see the solution of the king g2 is there something stronger What am I missing? It's very annoying. Maybe we should go, yeah, knight h3 is, I somehow just assumed the knight was somehow pinned, but it isn't. Uh, it definitely isn't pinned, so we can go knight h3 and just do that. Uh, rook f7 feels like it's uh, a slightly optimistic solution here. White was winning on the previous move and now he no longer is. Hmm. Uh, the important thing here is not to let the king cross over to that side, but you can actually give mate to the king on f1. You don't need to uh, drag it into the corner, actually. So you go bishop d5 check and you chase it down via, via the light squares. A variation of a smothered mate again. Yeah, I don't know why uh, rook f2 is the move we are supposed to refute here, but. This is once again a typical smothered mate. This is also a, a setup which is uh, sort of instantly recognizable because you want to use all of your pieces and you want to include the queen in the attack by perhaps attacking the h7 uh, pawn. So you go queen h6. If black takes, we go rook h7 mate. And here we, we have knight g6 with a mate. Mm. 
I think here uh, we do have to make one quiet move. It pretty much obviously starts with uh, rook g3. But now you need to bring the knight over to f3, and you do it by going knight e1 check, and then knight f3 check, and then you take on g1. Mm, here I'm guessing the, the trick is, uh, yeah, there's, you just have to figure out that you cannot play knight f6 check because after king h4 you run out of checks. But if you go knight g7 and then knight f5, we can actually uh, chase the king down on the h5 square. A version of a similar position that we just solved. Once again, the trick is to get the knight over to f6. And then uh, we give mate. Here I'm very tempted to go with knight f6, but actually the solution is knight g5 and then queen h5 mate. Once again, using the fact that the bishop on b3 takes away a lot of squares. Uh, I want to play bishop c5, rook g2, and queen h2, and I think it is the correct solution. And it's also, it's a variation on the theme well, of the position where we played bishop g5 check and then queen takes h7, because the bishop on d6 is basically uh, in the way of our mating pattern. So we just give it away to make sure the queen reaches the h2 square. This one is slightly trickier because um, no immediate obvious solution ex exists, but I think we start by rook b7. We kind of need to brute force our way into the position of the black king. So we start by rook b7, creating a threat of queen c7 mate, and then we go knight d6 check, including this guy in the attack, and then we get there. Uh, here it would be strange not to play queen takes a2. But in these types of positions, you have to know this motif. It's very important to rec recognize this motif. Uh, stopping king g2 is hugely important. So you start by playing bishop c3. And then with the king safely locked in on c1, uh, you chase it down and you give mate to it. Is this a good course? Uh, I think it is, Harry Taylor. And I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's, uh, it's solvable for me, but I think it will uh, stand you in good stead in terms of uh, learning the uh, the useful patterns here. Yet another uh, puzzle with the same theme of opening up the H file and giving mate on the H file. We've seen a number of those today. In this position, I think somewhat surprisingly, the most important piece on the board, yeah, that's not true. It would, it would be the same solution, actually, even without the bishop on c1. We go bishop g6, lure the king out, and we go queen f5 mate. Mm. This one is uh, also a setup that is useful to recognize the fact that if you land the bishop on f6 here, this pin will prevent black from being able to successfully defend the back rank. King c6. Okay, like I want to play knight e5 check, but I don't know if I need to, but it feels to me that this being a mating, pat mating pattern course, it is very sort of on brand to start by cutting away the, um, the escape via the d7 square. But I don't see mate after bishop takes c5, which is bugging me currently. Hmm. Interesting. You could also start with rook takes c5 here, but I don't see mate there. I, oh, hang on. Maybe it's something to do with queen. No. How do we get them? The position is quite clearly winning for white. Like in a practical game, you wouldn't be very worried if you had this position. But um, this is a different situation you just have to be precise curious rook c5 bishop c5 also doesn't quite work what am i like i'm i, I have a feeling that i'm once again missing something very straightforward but i don't see what this is very aggravating Uh, 
knight e5, bishop e5, rook c5, king c5, and we are running out of ammo. Hmm. Interesting. This is the first one where I am genuinely puzzled, not, uh, uh, you know, not just uh, unsure how to get there, but like genuinely, I, I don't see it. I don't even, it's very difficult for me f to figure out what I could be missing here. I have a feeling I'm I'm somehow supposed to end with the the the, the queen landing on f3 and giving made that way, but ah, oh, we can actually yeah, we can actually do that. Yeah, that's uh, I slightly cheated by actually looking at chat, but for some reason I I was only calculating queen c4 check and. Uh, I, I didn't see that we can actually, and here the final finesse, we obviously don't want to allow queen a5, so we start with this check. Yeah, I mean, seeing knight e5 is not a problem, but for some reason for me, uh, queen c3 check completely fell out of my field of vision. I was calculating queen c4, king b6, and then there's no mate. This is a Levon game uh, against Vladislav Kovalev. Feels like I probably shouldn't know where it's from either but I don't. I'm very tempted to start with bishop g6. I'm, hang on a second. No, no, no. It's very beautiful. We can go queen h7 and then bishop g6. This is curious. I feel like in a practical game, bishop takes g7 just wins on the spot, so you don't even look for anything better but there might be something better. I don't think so. I think this is the way to go here. Just go like this. And then the final flourish is queen takes g7, knight h6. I am sort of glossing over some things by this point because I, um, I realized I was taking a little bit too long. I think the solution always start with, starts with knight f6 check here. But after gf, I have not, yet figured out how to uh, do it in the most... I'm pretty sure we're supposed to go rook g4 check to keep the other rook on e1. But in this position, um, like I want to go rook g... I, I think it's actually this, right? Uh, no, that doesn't work. I was going to go queen h7, king h7, rook g1, but then there's rook e1 check. So we have to do it in a smarter way. I guess it's maybe just rook g1. I could also just go queen f7, maybe. No, queen f7, there's rook b7 in the end. That doesn't work. After rook g1, bishop f5, queen f5. I'm guessing black doesn't actually have a way to save himself. Or maybe queen h6. Oh, no, it's, it's actually queen h6. Check, check, check. Yeah, I think it's actually queen h6. Nope, okay. Uh, yeah, that was my first solution. Then I decided for some reason to fine tune it to something which wasn't working. Uh, the, the, I think the, the trick here is not to second guess myself too much. That was always going to be my first, my first instinct. I think uh, this is a reasonably famous position where it looks like white is supposed to go for some kind of a positional attack where in fact there is a brute force solution. Um, hmm. Interesting, because you want to give this double check, but it does not actually work as well as you would ideally hope. And I have a feeling that, like I wanted to go knight takes d3. I, you actually can go knight takes d3, and then you, you can take en passant, and you end up playing knight f2 mate anyway. Yeah, for some reason I thought allowing f4 was a mistake. Mm. 
in the practical game, you just go rookie one here, but maybe there is something stronger. It's just so difficult not to play rookie one in this position. Like almost impossible, I think, to force yourself not to go rookie one. And then just queen e8 and rook takes e6 against any move, pretty much. Or maybe queen is, hang on, queen e6, rook e6, no, you have to go rook e6. And then rook e8, and we end with bishop there, rook takes a fate mate. Here we just brute force it, like you can see that all of our forces are sort of converging on the c6 square. So you just uh, you just brute force your way through. <laughs> pretty sure this is a very famous position and uh, pretty sure you are supposed to uh, finesse it a little bit. Rook b7 to start looks very logical, but black does have queen c5 in reply. So, I guess you can just take on c7 there. A queen a3. After queen a3, I'm assuming there is some kind of a beautiful solution like rook a7 and then c takes d7, discover, check with the bishop, and then we go queen c8. And this little pawn actually turns into a, <clears throat> a queen with mate. Yes, another puzzle on the same topic. We've seen so many of these that I will not spend too much time on it. We've seen this construction a lot. Here, uh, you kind of badly want to go rook takes e2. I will just check if there is something stronger available, but it does feel like the solution will always have to include rook takes e2. Uh, and in this position, you do have to uh, generate a second threat because the queen is returning to h2, so you go bishop e6. And then the bishop lands on the long diagonal with decisive effect. Um, this is a game uh, by my uh, clubmate, Sergei Movsesian, who, uh, yeah, I've played with for a number of uh, uh, teams together. Like the you want to go knight f6 check, but the issue is black actually gets to the rook on g1. After knight f6 gf, if you go, let's say knight takes e6, queen takes g1 actually saves black from, from disaster. So you have to fine tune it somehow. But how? Hmm. Interesting. Another one I'm slightly stuck on because uh, like it's so difficult not to start with knight f6 or knight h6 here. They both look like moves you, you absolutely always play, but I don't actually see the follow-up for now. Kind of hard blanking on how we actually get there after knight f6, let's say. Hmm. Curious. I also have a feeling I've seen this position, which is making it even more, uh, even more embarrassing that I can't figure it out. I mean, yeah, I mean, we can take on C1, but it's just such a mad decision. Once again, I've sort of slightly cheated by glancing at what the esteemed, esteemed chat is telling me, but like, let's see. It's still slightly tricky even here, somewhat surprisingly, because you have to, uh, you have to find a way to, uh, to give a double check of some sort, I guess, in the end. Is there a difference between knight f6 and knight h6? Uh, don't really see it. Well, how is ah yeah, that's 
that's actually very beautiful. That is, I could have I could have returned to that idea later, but once again, a practical player in me always wants to take some F, take on f six with check here because you can always return to f seven later. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, queen h seven, queen h seven, knight f seven is very very nice. This is a, a typical setup where uh, you force a light piece. What? Ah, you have to do it in a. Whoa, that doesn't work. I was so sure that was good enough. So then my guess is we have to do it in this order, which is quite surprising that you have to do it in this order, but it's the same idea. Basically, you you make sure that there's a piece on F3 so that F2, F4 is never a move. And then you do this. Knight E5. I want to play knight h5, but I'm guessing I have to include something else first, but maybe not. Maybe it's good enough. It does feel, does feel correct. And then maybe we go rook e5, and then we return to the same pattern as in the previous puzzle. No? Why not? I guess maybe we can do it this way first, and now rook e5. I do feel quite strongly that it's supposed to be rook e5 here, and then bishop g6, and then queen h7. I, I am pretty sure that playing uh, playing rook e5 here also wins, but maybe somehow black can avoid getting mated, uh, at least immediately. This one feels. Like it shouldn't be difficult, but it actually is trickier than I thought. Because you you want to play f4, but then the king starts running towards good squares. Guess we can do hang on. This feels interesting, but I don't know if it's good enough. What if black takes and then goes king of five anyway? Ha. Huh. This is very cute. We just go f4 and we actually give mate to the king on these two squares. This is a very, very famous position. I don't know if the computer will penalize me from doing this with the wrong rook, but uh, it will actually, yeah? Interesting. I wasn't sure if that was going to be the case, but I am fairly certain of my solution. So what's the difference? Why am I being, what's wrong with playing it with the other rook? I really don't know. I'm I'm curious why rook rook a one here doesn't work exactly as well. Uh, there shouldn't be any difference between those two moves, uh, but we're we're not going to investigate too hard why why it's insisting on the the particular capture. Knight g five queen takes c three is where I'm currently slightly stuck. <clears throat> Interesting. Ah, okay, yeah. Last move being G seven, G five might might be relevant. Thanks for that. Uh uh, thanks for that. Uh, that's probably actually quite relevant because we do have the option of going FG. Um, it's very easy to miss those little uh, little hints. And now there has to be a reasonably straightforward way to give mate, right? Yeah, I could have been stuck there for a while had I not noticed what what chat was telling us here we obviously need to make sure that the king doesn't run towards the safety of the c6 square so we start by this and now i would like to play g4 and then f4 mate but um oh, hang on we can just give it give it give the mate with checks yeah we can just get the knight to over to e7 and then give the the same mate um here
Okay. Huh. Rook g7. That's funny. I did not expect that, but that will not save our opponent. I have a feeling I've seen this position, but... And there's a number of things here which will win. For instance, I think bishop f5 is probably winning on the spot, but I don't know if that will be accepted as a solution. I'll try it because I think it's a, it's a cute enough solution. I have apparently leveled up again, and I'm almost at my final form. It feels like rook g5 is the solution here, just making sure that the rook uh, cuts off the escape squares and then we give mate. Mm. Currently, I'm only stuck uh, with uh, what to do after king g7. Is there a better solution here? No, I think we do this, right? And then this, and then this. Mm, always starts with rook g2. And now I think the point is that this is mate, right? We cut off the g2 square and then we chase the king down. I mean, the f2 square, not the g2 square. Uh, queen g5, I assume. Uh, my question for now is how we deal with g6, but we have the the bishop on d3 actually gets to the h7 pawn here by giving up all of our stuff. This position I'm pretty sure I have seen in some books of from my youth. I think we go knight g6 and then we chase the king down, right? Knight g6, queen h4, rook g6. And uh, yeah, it's kind of weird that it continues to ask for precision here but uh, there has to be like this is this is where like in a normal game you just know that you will win so you sort of stop calculating but that's not a very good excuse when we are doing specifically mating patterns This one is curious because like this being a mating pattern uh, collection, you want to start by giving up material, but maybe we're just supposed to play bishop takes e4 and say you're completely helpless, but he is not completely helpless. He, well, white has queen takes e5 as a source of counterplay. Hmm. Oh, hang on. I'm being an idiot. Once again, you, you, you're very tempted by a move like knight of three check, but that actually is a counter check. You cannot allow that. So we do this instead. Nobody should play king of five in this position. So now we, we go rook e7 and rook f7 and rook takes f6. Yeah, going like jailing your own king this way is never going to end well for you. Yeah, this one is sort of very brute force. And we've seen this construction before, even in this set of puzzles. So it's exactly the same uh, eventual construction as the one earlier. Has to start with rook f8, but after king g7, I am currently slightly undecided. Oh, no, I'm not. Um, the king will get mated on the h file somehow, but the question is what discover check we start with. It's actually quite tricky because it seems like the king is reasonably safe on those g3, h3 squares.
not really seeing it so far. We need to somehow include the bishop on, uh, like ideally you would want the bishop on c6 to also participate in the in the mating attack, but I don't quite see how. Ah, there it is, yeah. We need to include the king in the attack. Uh, this one is... Uh, the take on a very similar theme as the one we've seen earlier, but uh, like, is there a difference if I go C3 or King D1, for instance? I don't know. Shouldn't matter. Mm, we are definitely brute forcing this one. The bishop needs to land on G7. And here, I guess we just go F4. And then we we get the rook to h8. This is a kind of a typical construction, which it once again it's kind of useful to know this exists. Uh, okay, that's also ah yeah because there's a simpler solution. Why am I why am I trying to be fanciful when there's a simpler solution? Queen g7 I'm pretty sure is also made, but probably like mate in five instead of mate in two. Uh, queen h7, I guess. One knight h7 check. Queen h7 looks like it should be the solution, so I'll play queen h7. Here, we kind of need to make sure the king doesn't run away. So I think we do this, right? We support the rook on e5, this checks, and then we mate him on f3. Has to start with bishop takes e6 because you cannot afford to allow king d7. I currently, ah, it's very cute. Well, queen a3, come on. There was a there was a way to make problems for white, which was slightly cuter than this, but can't really complain. Black is threatening some counterplay here. So I wonder if, you know, can I actually take a tempo to play queen of seven here is my question. Or do I need to be more forceful than that? Queen of seven does look very, very logical. It creates a number of kind of unparable threats. I wonder what I'm missing. Maybe I'm not missing anything. <clears throat> Maybe knight g5 instead. Which one is which one is better? Knight f6 or knight g5? They both look like they should be made, but one of them probably isn't. But I think this is probably good enough. This one we once again, we just need to get to the white king, so I'm not even going to think about my my options very hard. I think we just go like I think maybe this is the one tricky, tricky question of the puzzle. We just don't take this bishop at all to make sure that white doesn't have any more checks. Uh, I kind of want to take, but then after rook f5, white has g4. So what else do we have? Is there something smarter? 
<clears throat> Maybe just go rook f2. And now I think we go rook takes g2, right? <clears throat> and uh, rook anywhere. This is a very, very famous game. I definitely played in that tournament. That game was played in, I think it was the Petrov Memorial in uh, St. Petersburg in 1994. It was published everywhere. It's one of the nicest mating combinations I've ever seen live by my the hero of my childhood, Alexander Khalifman, uh, who played that against Grigory Serper in, in 94. Kind of want to play knight e7 here. I'm trying to figure out if there is something wrong with my calculations, but I don't think there is. Hmm. Feels like we need to throw in some more attackers here. Something like rook c1 and then queen f4 is interesting, but there might be something even more uh, decisive. I also feel like I should know this position, and it's kind of shameful that I don't immediately recognize it, but. Um, is there something stronger there? Like rook c1, queen f4 does look very, very nice, but. I guess after g3, there will not be any mate. So yeah, you, we, we do probably have something that is even more, even more brute force. Ha, huh, maybe we can go with rook c2 and then queen h4, sort of reminiscent of how my game against Kamsky went, but is it? No, okay. Yeah, that would have been a bit too much if that was like a direct sort of mirror image of my my combo against Gata. So what are we <clears throat> sorry, what are we missing here? I mean Rook C1 is clever, but I think I've spotted what, what is wrong with it. Starting with bishop takes g2 makes no sense because it only connects the white pieces even better. We can go queen h4 or queen h6, but then queen takes c5, bishop takes g2. And my issue is white even isn't obliged to take, but also I think queen takes g2 is fine. Hmm. Ah, yeah, yeah, maybe, no, hang on, no. That doesn't work either. Very confusing. Because I'm sort of running out of candidate moves here. Rook c1, rook g5, queen f4, g3. There's definitely no mate there. We might be doing good. Well, I mean, but we're definitely not winning. Interesting. Ah, hang on. Yeah, we can do this, right? This is the move that was eluding me. It took me a while to see queen f2 in that position. It's a very beautiful line. Uh, here, we obviously, if we allow the king to get back to good squares, we will never give mate to it. So we have to start with queen h8. But here, I think we have to play some kind of a quiet move like queen f8 and there is no stopping queen f4, right? Oh, come on. That wasn't a mistake. G4 was also made in one. Come on, don't be so harsh. Uh, this appears to be the last one. So I have actually crawled at least towards the finish line here. We just need to figure out how to get there. Knight F1 looks very logical-ish, but then we have Queen C3. How do we stop white from connecting connecting his pieces. 
I think it's actually correct to go knight f1 and after queen c3 we have queen a2, queen d5, queen g2, all kinds of threats. No? Okay. Yeah, the fact that the program kind of punishes me for giving the quote-unquote wrong mate in one but doesn't actually punish me for providing a wrong answer here is I feel blessed. I feel like it could be much harsher with me at certain points. So what's the solution here? We want to get the king queen over to h3. I mean, all of these moves make some sense. But uh, I'm guessing only one of them is correct. Um, are stopping anything from getting to c3 might be the way to go, yeah. And now we need to make sure that we... I think it's probably check. And now we need to attack this queen by also creating a threat. Like I think queen takes e6 is very cute, but it might not be the fastest way. I really like it though. I mean, it's there is some some you know aesthetic attraction to just playing queen takes e6 here. I suspect there might be maybe queen h5. No, queen h5, queen takes d1. I think it's actually is queen takes e6, and then knight f2. You finished learning the chapter, it says. So final stats, I took it an hour and 10 minutes on this. Uh, but I definitely, like I've spent quite a lot of time trying to explain basic concepts. So it could have, been, could have been done faster for sure. I've gained 13,590 experience, which should give me probably... Uh, I should say, I don't know, 450 gold and the pack, probably, I would say. Maybe even a hero portrait, depending on where I am. And uh, yeah, it was an interesting experience. Um, I did not try doing it for time. I think would have been interesting to just... Uh, obviously now I know the solution, so it's no longer open to me, but it would have been interesting to time myself just solving them for time and not really uh, getting distracted very much. But um, seems like a good course, seems like uh, they are quite nicely tuned to, at least this final test uh, is definitely a mixture of uh, positions which don't really require uh, too much from, let's say, a player of my strength, and some positions where you definitely need to engage the brain. Um, so yeah, enjoy doing it. Uh, hope you've uh, uh, enjoyed watching me struggle through the the hundred. And uh, I think this probably concludes the entertainment, such as it is for today. Tomorrow I'm doing uh, a lesson with uh, a very gifted young man. It will be slightly earlier than today. It will be, I think maybe even three hours earlier than today. Uh, it should be a lot of fun though. So uh, tune in to watch that. And I'm also doing something on Monday, which will be announced uh, slightly later. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. I think that's probably, although I haven't really heard from uh, management, maybe I'm supposed to do something else. <clears throat> I should make a screenshot of this though. No, that's, uh, whoops, that's not it. Uh, once again, thanks for watching. Yeah, and uh, I'll see you guys tomorrow.